My instrument is the body, and uh, I can say I've had mine all my life. I've played with this instrument all my life. And all my life, I always felt rhythms through it. I felt textures through it. And I always learned the most, the deepest wisdom ever through my body. The jazz just flows in the same way that the, the work comes out of me. It's just so natural, so natural. Such a natural um, outpouring of different sounds and feelings together. And then, you know, I'm trying to harness it. Jazz is a, a really high form of music. Woody Shaw called it a high form of classical music. Um, it's improvising, it's uh, creating and composing on the spot. Every time we play, we, we create a totally different uh, soundscape. And we play the same tunes over and over again, but they're never going to sound the same. They're always going to have variation. And that's what makes it so exciting. I try to um, just just kind of focus on and not not try to think of anything, not not try to you know think ahead and think, oh, what am I going to play? Just just kind of really be open and let, let it just happen. Contrary to what a lot of people believe about jazz is that well, as much as there is the, the given the freedom and the, the spontaneity and the unpredictableness of, of that genre, uh, that I think there's an equal amount of structure and, uh, and the discipline. The knowledge of the chords and scales is just a, a way to help you to be able to express yourself. It's just like learning a language, say you're learning a new language. like. I speak English, if I learn Spanish, I have to learn some of the grammar, the different words, but um, it'll take a while before I can actually speak it and converse. That's a whole other thing. So it's the same with jazz. People learn the roots, learn the, the chords and scales and things that work together, the harmony, and then they're able to use that language to express themselves in an improvisational situation. It's like four people sitting around a table talking about a particular topic. And so we may start talking about talk about the weather. Well, we'll all just kind of make our little uh, our little statements about the weather, what we think the weather the weather is today. Oh, it's a beautiful day outside, and it's great. And, you know, and Tim will go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I was out today, and I just went to the beach, and I hung out. And then John will say, well, you know, I took my kids to the park. There's a lot involved in, in the emotions and the communication that you, you have in a group. Um, I think the fact that we all get along well, we, we like each other's company, um, that, that seems to, to help out too. I mean, if you're on a bandstand with people that don't like you or you don't like them and there's an ego problem and then the communication kind of stops. Um, but with a band that, that gets along well, then on the, on the bandstand we, we're always trying to uh, work together. I think when jazz is played at its finest, I think when any music is played at its finest, people give away. They don't try to take. And one of the really nice things about the Honolulu Jazz Quartet is that we are very democratic. We don't step on each other's toes. We allow each other the space. We allow the music the space to breathe, to be able to uh, allow each other to express what we need to express. They try to give each instrument their kind of like their area of the frequency range, you know. So a lot of times when I'm playing with some 
uh, instrument that's kind of mid-rangey, like a sax or a guitar, I'll, I'll try and leave that area open and play, play chords real low and real high, like instead of playing down here, because they're right there, yeah. Yeah, trust, when, it, when I speak of trust, it's, it's um, primarily a musical term, uh, meaning that when you have a group, uh, each instrument, uh, f for starters, has, has a role to play. Uh, like for the drummer, um, you know, there's, there's musical trust in that, uh, you know, Adam will lay the time down, uh, as, as a drummer should do traditionally, and, and also to, to take artistic liberties as well. Sort of to, to take chances, you know. and, but I think there's there's both those elements that, that come into play, and I think when they're when they're uh, uh, valued equally and and used discreetly by each player, then then that's sort of what what trust comes in. And once you have that trust, then, then the playing is just a joy. That's what I think we strive for. I mean, one of my best compliments is when uh, people don't hear me, you know, and, and I, it's, it's a nice feeling because then you really realize, oh, I'm really a part of what's going on. Um, and that, that's kind of what we, I think we strive for, is to sound like one instrument instead of four instruments. Concept. When I was living in New York in cold weather for the first time and I had a heater, they call it a radiator over there too. And so the drummer in the beginning, Adam, uh, is playing uh, sounds that come from a heater. When I'm playing my best, I am so engrossed in the music that I don't know I don't notice anything around me. And all I'm thinking about is what I'm playing in relate in relation to the tune that we're playing. And I think that's when I go to that level where I, I just it's like I am the music instead of putting something on top of the music. I'm, I'm in it. It's those moments that you you actually live for, and that, that you live for to play music. You know those points where where 
it seems that, that something else is taking over and, and you're just in, in the moment, you know, you're, you're so in the moment that you're not worried about what's, what you're going to play or what's going to happen or if you're, if you're prepared enough for the song or if, you know, uh, if you've done all those things, then, then, then at that point I think is when uh, you know, something more powerful can take over. Something, something more spontaneous, you know, perhaps when everybody's energies are so, you know, well pulled together that, that, uh, that great things happen. I mean, you don't really know where it's coming from. <laughs> I mean, really, if you had to, if you had to tell somebody where it's coming from, I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, and usually when when it's the best, when the jazz is going the best, that's how it is. You know, and with other musics too, that happens. You know, it's kind of like almost like the individual disappears too, and it's just this entity that's that's going on. You know? What you put down, you can't change it, and it's an expression, it's a, um, a stroke that you, and that black paint gets on the paper. Uh, it's very similar to music, you can't take back a note that you played, and it's a spontaneous type of mu music. That's one of the beauties of jazz, it's, uh, it's in the moment, once that note is played, it's there.
the brush strokes it's just like an extension of my hand and so whatever I'm, I'm feeling or whatever I'm, I'm harnessing at that time goes down the movement of my body and, and just the feeling inside is what's going to come out and so people have said to me can you do another one of this or that I, I don't even know how I did it so I I can't do it it's just so much in the moment of everything coming together and it it going down I'm not even thinking however way the spirit moves me that's when I realize I have no control and it's the best feeling because it's complete surrender I don't know what it looks like I don't even know what it feels like because I don't feel like I hurt myself at all um, and I'm not sure what I did but I know I was going along for the ride.